Hi everybody, uh, this is Stacy with lovethatbug.blogspot.com. Uh, you can see by my desk here, I have quite a mess going. I'm going to show you how to create something that I found years ago on a TV show, so it's not my original idea. I've seen it on a TV show, as well as um, crafting magazines and um, books at the library. Uh, but you can be as fancy or as elaborate as you want. I am a very um, not so fancy type girl, so mine are not that fancy. What I'm showing you here are these little clothesline baskets. They're really fun and really easy to uh, make. You can see this one's just an all white wonky type basket. I have it holding miscellaneous staples, thumbtacks, screws, hooks, that type thing. I also have one that is a little bit larger and this has color. So this one's actually blue and light blue. Um, so these are really fun to make to match your rooms or to match your decor in your scrapbook room or your living room or you know make trivets for your kitchen. Um, but let me go ahead and show you what you need to make these. Um, the first thing you're going to need is a sewing machine. So this is a sewing, mach a sewing machine type product or project. And if you want a colored basket, you're going to want to get scraps of fabric. But let's first start about the clothesline. Um, my husband got mine at Walmart yesterday and it's made by Mainstays. It's 50 feet in length and it's made from, let me find it here, it's made from a cotton and polypropylene blend. I'm probably butchering that, but um, a cotton and polypropylene something, okay? So you want your clothesline basically to be a fabric. I know there's a lot of clotheslines that have their green wire or a wire one. You want yours to be a cloth type material. So you can see that. Looks like a snake, doesn't it? Woo! Okay. Um, anyway, you're going to need clothesline. Like I said, this is 50 feet in length. So depending on how big you want your basket to be or your trivet or whatever you're making is going to depend on how much clothesline you have. Uh, if you, Like I said, if you want it to be a colored basket like this, you're going to need to get scraps of material. Okay, now you can use any material you want. It doesn't, need, it doesn't need to be cotton. It could be fleece. It could be cotton. It could be your kids' t-shirts or sheets, your husband's underwear. I don't care what fabric you use. And you're going to need clothes pins. Okay, oddly enough, clothes line and clothes pins. All right, so to, to get started on a colored basket, as far as a cloth material, a colored basket, you're going to start at the very end of your clothes line. You will see it's burnt on one end, or actually burnt on both ends to stop the fraying. Okay? But I like fraying. So you can see here, I have strips of fabric that are all different. They're all frayed and they're different widths. Okay. Um, what you want though, to make it easier, you're going to want to cut your material or your fabric um, a little bit longer than my measly little five inches. This is from an old quilt I made years ago. So I'm just using this for scraps to show you. So if you have fabric scraps, great way to use them. And again, you want to cut them to be about a half inch or you know an inch but you can see my widths again are different I'm not exact so you know measurements is not necessary so you're going to start at the very end of your clothesline here and you're basically just going to wrap your fabric around it in the little strips so this is a great in front of the TV type project um, to get started on okay so take your clothesline put it on there and now you're going to angle down so you're just going to fold this down I'm going to zoom in or actually go up so you can see okay I'm just wrapping this around nice and tight. You want to make sure it's a nice and tight wrap. Okay, and then once you get it started, that little end, so it doesn't unravel, you're going to take your little clothespin. Okay, and just keep on going down the line. Isn't that funny? Going down, we're going down the clothesline. Okay, so keep on going. And again, nice and tight here. And here I'm at the end of my rope, more or less, or at the end of my fabric, <laughs> trying to make, trying to be funny there. Okay, so I have the end of material. Now, if I want to add another color, I'm going to just go ahead and place that one right on top. And again, wrapping it down, holding it nice and tight. Once I get it started, come back there and add another clothespin. So that would be why you'd want your, your strips of fabric to be a little bit longer than 5 inches because you're going to have a clothespin every 2 inches. So the longer your fabric, the less clothespins you're going to need. And then, But you know, you're still going to want to add a clothespin here and there just to keep this piece secure. I'm going to go ahead and unravel these. I'm not going to show you the whole entire process. It'll be boring. But I would do the whole clothesline this way. Okay, the whole 50 feet. Um, but I'm going to show you today basically how to do a white one. Okay, because this is just the clothespin and my sewing machine. And I'm going to show you how to make a trivet because the trivets are a lot easier, um, a basic circle. But like I said, you can get the books out there online. I'll even look online for clothespin or clothesline baskets. Some of them are really, really, really pretty. And, you know, like I said, my design was by default um, it was pretty much by error as a lot of my projects are just goofing off playing around that's how I came up with that alrighty um, but I'm going to show you here how to make a trivet so you're going to want to start with the end of your clothesline 
and I'm gonna zoom you guys in, hopefully here, let me get the camera. Zoom you in so you can see. And as I said, the one end is burned. Now you're basically just gonna wrap this up, see how I'm bending it over, to make it to form a circle. And you wanna have your coil, basically, be really, really tight. Okay, so I'm just gonna wrap this around. I know you can't see because my big old thumb's in a way, but I'll show you in one second what it looks like. Again, I'm just wrapping this around in a coil. And I'm trying to keep the coil even, top and bottom, so I don't have like a little bowl type deal. Okay, you're gonna keep it even, wrapping it around nice and tight. And once you get it going like that, you can see my coil there, rather than using a clothespin, because the clothespin only can cover a part of that, I'm going to use a binding clip, okay, just to keep this in place. So you can see how that is. I'm going to use a binding clip. All right, so now you can see the starting of my coil. I'm going to pause the video, take it to my sewing machine. Yep, I'm going to sew on camera. That should be tricky to show you how to go about starting this. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I am back at my sewing machine. I apologize if the view is bad, but um, I never sewed with a tripod and camera sitting in front of me. Um, I have just a basic, you know, generic, um, cheap sewing machine here. I have mine set up for a zigzag stitch. And I still have my coil. Let me zoom, let me get, zoom you guys out for a minute. Okay, I still have my coil here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to unwrap my coil. And I'm actually going to change my machine to go back to a straight stitch. And I'm going to stitch across, right across the front. Okay, holding this in shape. Or holding, trying to get my, trying to hold this in shape the best I can. Actually, and again, you want to make it be as flat as you can. Okay, so if you, if you need to readjust your coil, go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to lay that down. Hopefully you can see there. Nice and flat. Lower my foot. Hope there's not a big glare. And I'm going to sew right across. Maybe. Okay, lift up that up. Take this out. Okay. So now I sewed directly across and it came off the loop and that's fine. I'm now gonna sew in the opposite direction. Basically all you're doing here is kind of holding your coil in shape. Okay, lift that up. Now, if I can get this back out, I made a knot. Okay, let me sew that. Now I'm gonna switch my camera view and show you what I do next. Be right back. Okay guys, we are back. I have the coil um, started here, as you can see, hopefully there. And I just made an X. Now you're gonna change your machine set, your machine setting to a zigzag. And now we're just gonna follow the line of our clothesline. So you can see here where the two lines of clothesline meet. I'm gonna start right about here and do a zigzag stitch. So again, I'm gonna line that up where I want it to go. Start my zigzag. You know what? I'm gonna actually pause this and make you guys or put you guys in front of me. Hang on. Okay, I'm back now. I'm gonna show you here. I'm basically just gonna follow my coil and I'm gonna turn this as I go and just basically do my zigzag stitch. And my zigzag, I want to make sure that I catch this part of the clothesline as well as the one I'm adding. Okay. So let me go ahead and start this again. Bring this down so I can see I have, a, I have a wide zigzag. When I get to a point and I need to turn, lift up your pressure foot and turn your cord around a little bit. Okay, and then again, we're gonna do our zigzag. And I'm making sure, you can see over here I'm bumbling up, that's fine. We're gonna come back and we're gonna grab that in a second. So I'm gonna turn my clothes on again. Flip it up, turn it around again, and you will, all you're doing is making sure that you're zigzagging around and catching both pieces of that clothesline. Oops. Turn it around again, and I'm sorry if there's a glare here. I'm trying to get you to where, um, you know, I can show you without having the camera be all wonky. Okay, so again, I'm grabbing that other piece of clothesline. I'm back and you would just continue this the whole way around. Okay, I'm not gonna bore you by doing this, but you can see it's pretty easy. It goes by relatively fast, it's nice and relaxing. 
And if you want to go up, um, you, you know, if you're going to make a bowl, you would start out the same way. Oop. Give me one second here. Okay, so as I was saying, if you wanted to make a bowl, you would do the same idea. Okay, but one, you, you know, with the, this would be the base of your bowl. Okay, so once you have it to where you know your bowl, you want your bowl to go up at that point, you basically start turning it. Okay, I'm not going to do that yet because I only have a little bit of um, line here, but I will show you in one second. I'm going to pause this and come back when I'm a little bit farther along. Be right back. Okay, back with just an update. You can see now I got quite um, the coil going, and it's nice and flat, nice and even. Um, and basically, like I said before, you're just taking this strand and you're going to do, do a zigzag stitch to attach this piece to that piece. So you just want to keep on moving along. You can go as fast or as slow as you want. Okay, you just, so you're going to keep on going along and make this as big as you want. Um, if you, at this point, if you want to make a basket, like I said, you want to have enough here to where you can start going up. So if you want your basket to start forming now, you would basically take this piece and curve it. And you would keep on doing that and go around like that, and that would form your basket. But basically here, I'm going to make a um, trivet, and I'm going to use the whole length of my clothesline um, so I can see, so I can get like a nice large trivet. So I'll be back finishing it. Um, you can see the whole entire trivet when it's done, and I'll show you how to go about ending the clothesline. So I'll be right, we'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. I want to show you here how the trivet is now getting, you can see it a lot larger. And I want to keep this flat. Now you can see over here, it's, even though it's curling up, that's completely fine. As long as you leave this piece down here flat, it won't curl up. So I'm going to go ahead and sew a few more in here. Now as I said earlier, if you wanted to curve this up, if you want to make a basket, you would start your curving. Okay? And you know, as you go around and you keep, you know, like three clothes or four or five clothesline lengths flat, your bowl will start forming its shape. But I'm making a simple trivet. And even though I'm not going to have enough room in here to make a larger trivet, I'm going to keep on going until um, I can't go any farther. Then I'm going to show you how to go about finishing um, this off. Because you're going to have a leftover piece of clothesline hanging off. And you, I'm going to show you what to do with that. So I'll be right back. Okay, I want to show you again. As I mentioned earlier, um, it's going to start curving as you can see. Um, right there, it is starting to curve. When I'm sewing though, I'm pretty much laying my whole hand down here to keep this flat so it's not going to curl up. So watch as I do this, I'm going to try to finagle my fingers there. And again, leaving the whole, trying to leave the bulk of the surface flat. And again, with your zigzag stitch, you want to make sure that you're catching both pieces of the clothesline. And it does go by really fast. Once again, now, um, again, you want to keep this flat if you're making a trivet. I'm going to keep on going until I can't go any farther. Then I'm going to show you how to close it when it's done. Okay, guys, I'm back. You can see I rearranged my position here. I now have most of my trivet over here. It looks all kinds of wonky, and that's fine. We'll fix that. But I'm going to show you here. I'm now at the end of my rope, literally. Um, this has that burn piece on there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. And I'm just using these little scissors. So it might be kind of hard to get this off of there. I should have went and got my bigger scissors, but I didn't feel like getting up. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and cut that. Now you can see it does fray. Now all you're going to do is you're going to continue sewing all the way across. Okay, so act like that end isn't even there. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. And we're going to kind of overlap it a little bit. Like that. Okay, and then continue to sew. And then I can't get my big fingers in there, so I'm just going to hold it with my scissors. Okay, so now we're off. I'm going to release this. Show you here what the ending will look like. It's going to look like that. It's going to look all weird, and that's fine. Okay, and you can also make a loop also. So I'm going to go ahead and come back, and I'm going to sew straight over that. So it kind of blends it in a little bit. And I'm still on the same zigzag stitch. I'm going to back it up a little bit. Okay, take this off. Now you can see it looks a little better. I mean, it still has that indent, but the more you um, play around with it, let me go ahead and cut this off so you can see. You know, the more you play around with that, it'll manage, it'll get, it'll get over there. You know I mean, you just got to keep on playing with it. 
but let me go ahead and zoom you guys out. Put this up. Sorry about that. So I can show you the whole entire trivet. Okay. Now you can see it doesn't lay flat. Let me move it out of the way so I can kind of get you in the camera. Doesn't lay flat, and that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and heat press this and sew it. And then you can see it does eventually get flat, and then we're going to do it. Um, a neandering stitch around it. So I'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm back. This is a finished trivet. Um, I did iron it so you can see it pretty much lays flat. But if you go through here and you um, kind of pull on it, you will see there's areas like right there. I didn't quite catch both sewing cords. So rather than going all the way through that, I'm going to show you what to do. i bring back my sewing machine here. Now on my machine, you will see, or hopefully you can see, I changed my presser foot. I believe this comes with all the machines, and this is um, like a neandering foot, or a neandering foot, I think it's called, or a free motion foot. What that does, it allows us to completely wiggle this fabric any which way we can, okay, that we want to. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're just going to go around in all kinds of funny shapes and circles, and all this is going to do is to make sure that it's really um, attached, okay? So let me go ahead and lower this and start that. So you can see here, I can just do all kinds of funny shapes, kind of like, you know, when you're quilting, when you're making a quilt, the same idea. So we're just gonna go around, I'm gonna work from one side, and I'm gonna go right to the center. But I did go faster here, so it's not too long. And again, you just want to go around little loops. And go back to the center again. And I'm going to stop it here. You can see I got a story thread there. Let me go ahead and chop this off. Okay, so you would just keep on doing that. Just go out from the center. This way, you know, you're going to get all them pieces. So it's all going to be one solid piece. So I'm going to hit pause, finish this, and show you what the finished product looks like. Hey, everybody, I'm back. Here is the finished project, uh, our finished trivet. Uh, you can see here I have my little plant sitting on it in my sewing room. Um, it's not perfect, but it's fine for me. Um, and again, I used the white, uh, the white clothesline. I believe it only comes in white as far as the fabric type of clothesline. Uh, but you can play around with your thread. I used white thread on the top as well as on the bobbin. So I have white thread on top and bottom. But you can use, you know, like a green thread or a blue thread. You know, so you can play around, you can play around with your thread colors as well as your stitches. And um, later on, maybe I will show you all how to make a bowl out of the, um, the same idea. Um, any questions at all, please let me know. Um, as always, thanks so much for watching. Have a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.